Uh, uh, so much still to come before we get to any of these uh, issues. Let's talk about the F word. You can't use the F word if you're a doctor. And by that, I mean fat. Uh, they can't say, doctors have been given training to improve their bedside manner amid a tide of complaints about NHS staff who have called patients, people who go to see them, fat. And the reason uh, I would suggest is they've been uh, called fat is because they are fat. Uh, and uh, fat shaming, uh, is there necessarily anything wrong with it? Uh, surely it's not a bad idea, is it, to say you're a bit fat, go on a diet. If it embarrasses them into going on a diet, it'll be good for their health. This is ridiculous, is it not? Let's talk to the founder of Young Voices UK, Jason Reed. Good evening, Jason. Good evening, Kev. I mean, you should be able to call it like it is. I mean, why this is sort of snowflakery gone mad, isn't it? Doctors not being allowed to call fat people fat. Doctors need to be allowed to do their jobs, and sometimes that involves taking into account people's weight, and that's just the way it is. My perspective is that obesity will always exist when we live in a society that has free choice. We can choose what we eat, we can choose our lifestyle, and that means that some people will choose lifestyles that end with obesity. But just because someone's obese, it doesn't mean that they have a particular lifestyle. People can be obese for a number of reasons. It might be because of eating disorders, it might be because of glandular conditions, it could be any number of things. And so when you start objecting to doctors using very basic descriptor terms like fat, it makes it impossible to do their yeah, jobs. Yeah, yeah, they should be able to say you're too fat. Now, our prime minister, Boris Johnson, is particularly uh, consumed by the issue of obesity for obvious reasons. Let's just have a quick listen to our esteemed leader for the second time in one night. Our cup runneth under. I've been doing a lot, in fact, everything I can to uh, lose weight and to feel uh, fitter and healthier. And the, what I've been doing is I've been eating less uh, carbs, avoiding uh, chocolate, no more late night cheese, all that kind of thing. I've been getting up early to go for, for runs. And the result is, you know, I actually have lost some weight, uh, quite a lot by my uh, standards. I know there are many people who are in the same sort of position as I am and I was and who who want to lose weight and that's why we're investing now in uh, the that whole national objective and so we'll be not just fitter but also healthier and happier and we'll bounce back better together well there he is Jason the world's fattest jogger uh, Boris Johnson uh, but, you know, how far are we going to go with this molly coddling of patients? I think, as you quite rightly said, doctors and nurses should be able to say to people, you're too fat, do something about it. And if that term fat is nasty, so be it. Because fat shaming, I don't think, is a bad thing. I mean, where are we, where does this all end? Uh, will it come to the point where doctors won't tell people they've got cancer because it might upset them a bit? I mean, this we can't mollycoddle people when it comes to their health, can we? Well, you're right to use the word mollycoddling. It's, it's the nanny state gone mad, isn't it? Boris Johnson has been able to lose weight through, through the decisions he described there and that's good for him but the thing I don't understand is that he was able to lose weight by avoiding late night cheese and by getting up to go for a run and so on but he thinks that the rest of us aren't able to do that and we need the nanny state to step in and help us to achieve the same thing that he did on his own and so we need all these you know sugar taxes and salt taxes and junk food advertising bans which are just uh, molly coddling as you say of, of people and patronizing and infantilizing us and this new um, training that doctors are going to get to avoid telling people that they're overweight is exactly the same thing. It's just the state thinking that it knows best and that we're all children who need to be taken care of and patted on the head. It's not treating us like adults. What is this obsession, uh, increasing obsession, uh, we as a society here seem to have with euphemisms? You know, so we used to talk about, for example, uh, third world countries. We now have to call developing countries even if they're not developing you know uh, afghanistan that's not a developing country but that's what we have to call it uh, wh why is it that we're having to uh, sort of cover everything in cotton wool is it because we're scared of the realities of this world and we need to be protected from them i think it's certainly a, a perception that lots of people are scared i think there's a lot of classism going on there that 
uh, the sort of middle class elites in Whitehall think that the rest of the country needs to be talked down to, um, that they don't understand the issues as well as they do with their with their educations and with their careers in the civil service. And I think there's a strong link between uh, the rhetoric here and the policy. And we see it, but obesity is the perfect example. We see it with the government saying, uh, we're going to help you slim down. There's that new scheme that Boris Johnson announced a few, few weeks ago where he's going to give us gold stars and, and vouchers and things for making the right decisions and making healthy choices as if we are primary school children. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, frankly, uh, I don't think it's the state's business, any of the state's business, whether or not I'm fat or thin, nor do I think it's any of the state's business what I eat. If I want to eat chips and fish and sausages every day of the week that's my business not boris johnson's and i know they'll say well it's a health issue uh and then they'll say well you know then why should you get nhs help uh if you bought it upon yourself i'll tell you why because i'm a taxpayer and i pay for the nhs so if i'm sick because i smoke too much or i drink too much or i eat too many fatty foods do your job treat me i paid for you Exactly right. There are all kinds of things that people do that can make them more likely to need NHS care. People playing football are much more likely to have injuries on, on their legs and on their shins. But we don't, we don't shame that as a society. We have this strange obsession, I think, with obesity. We, we feel the need to stigmatise it and push it into a corner and to shame people who are obese and make assumptions about their lifestyles and their choices. But that's just not born out in reality. As I said before, people can be obese for any number of reasons. Obesity is always going to exist. We're going to have to learn to live with it. And the government is going to have to learn that it cannot eradicate it by trying to centralize people's policy decisions, uh, people's life, lifestyle decisions in policy and trying to pander to them and talk down to them and thinking if we don't say the word fat, then it will go away somehow. It's strange, isn't it? The way uh, Boris Johnson, uh, uh, you know, came into power uh, on a sort of wave of libertarianism. That was his stock in trade. Do you remember at the Tory conference a few years ago when there was a big row going on about how bad turkey twizzlers were for you, that kids were eating this horrible processed food? And uh, Boris Johnson made some sort of speech for, about freedom of, to eat what you like, saying turkey twizzlers for all. You know, I really liked him then, uh, but he's gone full circle. He's, you know, he is now the opposite of libertarian about uh, what we eat what we do uh, you know he's a big sort of vaccine passport guy he gets worse and worse and worse doesn't he he does he really does he used to talk enthusiastically about britain as being a land of liberty uh, he was elected to the leadership of the tory party in 2019 on a platform of rolling back and um, the continuing creep of the nanny state to use his words and since then he's uh, kept theresa may's soft drinks sugar levy in place. He's uh, introduced a junk food advertising ban, which um, by the government's own predictions will remove less than two calories per day from children's diets. And in exchange for that, it's going to hamstring the advertising industry uh, and the broadcast industry. And, uh, and of course, now we've got the possibility of taxes on sugar and salt. He's had a complete transformation in the way he views public health policy. I don't know why that is. Perhaps it's because of his own personal journey. But like I said before, it doesn't make any sense because if he can do it on his own as an individual, why do the rest of us need the government to step in and help us to lose weight? Why can't we make our own decisions just the same way he did? Yes, I mean, disconcertingly, he's increasingly in charge of a nanny state, isn't he? He is, exactly. The state is, the state is more and more acting as our nanny. And the, these policies, not only do they not work, because uh, as we've seen with the soft drinks, sugar levy, for example, obesity has not gone down, sugar consumption has not gone down. They, they are actively bad because they stigmatize obesity. They make it seem like something to be, to be ashamed of. And I don't think that's the right way to go about it. And then there are other consequences as well, like with sugar taxes and salt taxes. You're just making the poor poorer. You're just making the shopping trip every week a little bit more expensive for no good reason. Uh, and these things are never thought through. They're just pushed by the public health lobby and the nanny status in government. They just go along with it because they're told that people need to be talked down to. And that's an attractive notion to them. Final point, Jason. Uh, if this government, as it's fond of telling us uh, 47 times a day, is so worried about our health, 
Uh, why does it not make uh, smoking tobacco illegal? Well, that's a good question. You know, I mean, there are plenty of uh, something to do with the money actually. it brings in. <laughs> it, it would seem like that, wouldn't it? It's just that the instinct is always to raise the taxes um, rather than to do anything to actually help us. There are all kinds of tobacco harm reduction products on the market that help people who have nicotine addictions. That we're moving away from smoking as a society anyway, but uh, the government, the Treasury is very much addicted to those tobacco taxes, perhaps. Exactly. Uh, the Treasury is still getting billions of pounds a year out of people smoking mm -hmm. cigarettes so that while they're uh, concerned about our sugar and salt consumption, uh, if you want to smoke 20 cigarettes a day, that's fine by the government. It needs the money. So let's not forget that ultimately when it comes to the nation's health, uh, Boris and his nanny state government are complete hypocrites, as they are in so many other areas. Jason, great to talk. Let's talk again soon. Jason Armstrong, Director of Communications at... Oh, that's the wrong person. <laughs> Jason... Uh, where is he? Jason Reed, a lead at uh, Young Voices UK. I went back a couple of pages on my running order there. Lead at Young Voices UK. Jason Reed. good to talk to him. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan, and this is Talk Radio.